so damn good. I think it needs an upgrade. Oh. Oh, this is a lot wider of a frame. Oh, I got put pants on. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guy. Hey guys, and yes, as you can see, you can see more of the wall. You can see the mess that's in this room. I'm now shooting on this EOS R, which is pretty damn cool. Finally got an upgrade, and we now have a non-crop sensor. As for that, this is my review of Band of Brothers. And the reason why I thought this was a good way to introduce the new camera is in fact how I actually started re-watching this series again. I have watched Band of Brothers so many times in the last 18 years, because the show premiered back in 2001. I've seen so many different changes and how I view episodes, so many different aspects of how they filmed them, how they created them, how they recreated sequences and areas of the war, down to the equipment, to the characters, to the events that happened around them, to the just general honorable loyalty, respect that this show had when they recreated the story of Easy Company. I actually even watched some of these episodes when it aired, on HBO back in 2001. My first episode ever being the breaking point. I know it's an odd episode to start on considering I didn't start from the beginning. My dad and I weren't exactly the most entwined with watching television shows new and HBO obviously was a new thing for us. That's why I watched that episode first. Ever since then I have seen so many different renditions of it and on different formats. I first watched this show in its entirety on VHS recordings that my dad's friend had done when the show had premiered. I moved on to the DVD steel box set that a lot of people have. I actually started re-watching it again at the beginning of this year and it was at that point where I realized yeah you need the blu-rays however while I still bought the blu-rays all I did is I actually just took the DVDs out of this one put it in the blu-ray case and I still kept this case because this case is dope they don't make it like this anymore mainly because of the use of paper and cardboard for those of you who don't have this that is what the DVD case had inside on the other side and of course the DVDs, well, now the Blu-rays are in it. I honestly can't start to describe to you how good this show was and just how well it stands the test of time. Aside from some ISO, some really grainy shots, obviously due to the camera technology at the time, this show you would almost believe was made now. That is because of one, incredible attention to detail. Two, impressively good cinematography. Unnecessary, but incredibly well done cinematography by the two cinematographers of this show. Three, the absolutely amazing special effects crew that was on this show. So much special effects that were done practically. Four, the time in which it was filmed, which means that they couldn't fake a bunch of stuff with CG yet, so they actually had to bring in a bunch of real tanks, real cars, real vehicles and equipment, as well as bring in all of these actual extras into this film to make these scenes feel real. And five, the absolutely incredible acting done by everyone in this. Everyone is a fantastic actor doing a loyal and very respectful interpretation of the real life person that they are playing. Probably the one thing that's a little jarring for me was just how old all the actors look, despite the fact that most of these guys are supposed to be in their early 20s. For instance, the gentleman who plays Dick Winters was 28, 29 when they were filming this series. His character, in fact, was only 26 years old. I actually started re-watching this show because I've been listening to the novelization of the novel Band of Brothers. There's so much more that you see when you rewatch the show with this knowledge in the back of your mind. Equipment that these guys had to carry, the logistics of their missions, other firefights, engagements, and hells that they went through that the show doesn't even talk about or doesn't have the time to, especially being in Holland. The more personal views that the men had, as well as the logistics of everything that happened. Obviously, we're following along with what happens with Easy Company from their training to their D-Day drop to fighting in France, to fighting in Holland, to fighting in Baston, and then finally marching into Germany and Austria. This show was produced by Tom Hanks and Steven Spielberg, and they still had Saving Private Ryan very ripe in their minds, as you can tell from the authenticity of the fighting, the weaponry used, as well as how incredible the gunfights are. Day of Days is a great episode to start on, especially showing Winter's maneuver that is so well-renowned that it is in fact still taught at most military academies. But Watching the Battle of Carantan opened up my eyes to just 
what these guys went through during the war. When I was around 11, 12 years old, I was interested in the events of World War II. I was interested in the events that our veterans had gone through. Watching this was so eye-opening. Obviously, I'd gotten a little bit of a sneak peek of D-Day because my dad had bought Saving Private Ryan when I was a kid, and I did watch the D-Day events with absolute awe, horror, and incredible fascination. Then watching Band of Brothers showed what happened after D-Day, and this is from the perspective of the paratroopers, who I was always interested in from Saving Private Ryan. Now, something I should have mentioned a while ago is for you American viewers, I'm Canadian, so I don't know that much about the American military, their history, as I did when you would have known probably a lot earlier than I did. So this was all new to me, but it was still incredibly fascinating. Carantan is a great example of special effects, cinematography, and fantastic stunt work and coordination and directing all on display. Every episode, while having similar elements of character, authenticity, history, and battle in it, have their own little quirks into each episode. For instance, the first one is really focusing on the struggle between Sobel and Winters and their means of how they try to combat with each other while running Easy Company. Then Day of Days is about the boys and just their awe of going into battle for the first time. Tarantan is about Bly and the just the regular everyday soldier. Replacements is about when they start to lose men and when they start to kind of realize that there is danger all the time for everyone. Crossroads is actually one of my favorite episodes, despite not as much happening in it. I'm always amazed at what happened when Winters runs up onto that little road, shoots the young kid, and then they start to slaughter all the SS around them. In the book, after that entire gunfight from the night before to the following day with the slaughter, Winters says that he had to reload his M1 Grand about 56 times. His hand was twitching so much from all the shooting and the reloading. And then we moved into Baston, which is one of my favorite episodes because it follows the doc, the medic of the team, and just the absolute hardship he went through trying to help these guys in a shell-shocked artillery bomb zone that they had barely any equipment, they had improper provisions, they didn't have enough to help take care of people, they were ripping bed sheets off of pillows and beds to use those as bandages. And then in the seventh episode, Breaking Point, which is, in my opinion, one of the best episodes of the entire show. Seven is the episode that really brings PTSD into the show, and it shows the absolute hardship that these guys were going through, the mental fortitude, and the crumbling all around them. And on top of that, this was all filmed in a hangar. Well, most of it was anyways. All the scenes where there's explosions and trees blowing up and them in kind of a dense forest area that was filmed inside a hangar from the note that i read there was over 250 real trees and something like 80 or 90 fake trees that they blew up or fell and there's something like 300 thousand sheets of shredded paper all along the ground to fake snow the camera work that is done in breaking point is beyond real there are shots that are one shots, meaning that they blew up shit that they couldn't do again. It's not like they could just reset the tree falling on fucking people or the reset the tree fragments exploding all around the actors. When Joe Toy and Bill Garnier are hit by an artillery round, the camera shows trees in the, in the background blowing up, exploding, falling down, and it slowly pans down to Bill and Garnier on the ground. The absolute balls on the cinematographer for going, hey, you know, we're not gonna just make this a static shot. We're actually gonna put some level into this. And they do this over and over and over again. I would say there's about 30 to 40 one-shot takes in both Baston and in Breaking Point. Supposedly the amount of special effects, ordinance, explosions, and whatnot that they had to do for the show up the budget by another 20 million. The construction in this show alone cost 70 million dollars. And you will believe it considering how much of the towns they rebuild, how many sets they and locations they rebuild, and then just how much they blow up this fucking forest. And then in an episode that I've actually not held as high as I thought I would, but really does 
kind of bring over the element of depression, the lack of hope, and just the wanting for the war to end is The Last Patrol being episode 8. I've always given this episode a hard time when actually it's pretty good and really talks about just the lack of will and the hardship and how few people are left from the original company. And then episode 9 and 10. 9 hits me so much harder now, and I don't know why it didn't hit me as hard then, but it's when they come across the concentration camp, and then when they bring the German people in, who clearly knew what the fuck was going on, and they bring them in to take care of the bodies and help deal with the aftermath of the camp. There's so much emotion in this. It's definitely compounded by the fantastic score that's always delivered by the show's composer, Michael Kamen, I believe his name is, as well as the authenticity of the actors, the devastation of the entire area. They don't pull any punches with this. There's a lot of times where they'll do 360 shots, which already are incredibly complicated to try and hide not only what crew is behind the cameras, but then showing every aspect that's around them. And you can't like do this over and over again. This takes a lot of coordination and setup, and that happens in the beginning of why we fight. When they show the whole town and it's rubble and everyone taking pieces away and like helping with the cleanup and then it ends up on top of this destroyed building with Nixon just about to tell them that Hitler is dead. That took so much effort and coordination to do. The camera and cinematography crew definitely did a goddamn amazing job in this episode. And then finally Points. Points is a great episode to end on. It probably is one of the most hard-hitting episodes to you. At the end, we get to see the veterans, who they were interviewing, and them be finally being revealed for who they are. I always get Lipton and Winters mixed up, because the actual Lipton looks like what I thought Winters would turn into, like just the hair. and They did choose the actors because of their resemblance to the actual veterans they were playing, so that's why I've always had that thought. But how it ends with Lipton reciting the line from Henry V, We Band of Brothers, oh my god, I, I honestly just finished it and I was starting to tear up. And I've watched this so many times. If you've never, somehow, never seen Band of Brothers, go goddamn watch it. I know everyone loved Game of Thrones for the most part. <laughs> this is honestly the best thing that HBO ever made, in my opinion. I know there's The Sopranos. I know there's a bunch of other stuff that they've made that was more than one season. This is just a miniseries, but honestly, this was so goddamn good that it still stands up to most, if not surpasses most current day war movie. And this was made 18 years ago. That tells you just how much this show still stands up. The Pacific that they did later was good and it did focus more on PTSD and it still holds up to today too. It's a different element from the Band of Brothers in my opinion and you can't really say that they're the same thing, which is why I don't like the Pacific as much as Band of Brothers but it's still a very respectful, very well-made show. But Band of Brothers basically just set the high point in terms of delivering World War II historical representation. Barely any show or movie that has come after Band of Brothers has been able to even match this show, let alone surpass it. Just sitting here, thinking about it, I honestly can't tell you anything that can surpass this movie that's been made in the last 10 years. There are some movies that come you know, within a respectful barrier. But even then, they still don't match this. They either have too much Hollywood in them or they have improper representation. Now, I know that this show did have a little bit of leeway with certain things. For instance, in Crossroads, Winters didn't shoot the kid. He actually threw a grenade, but the grenade still had a rubber band on it that Winters used to make sure he himself didn't get blown up. So while the kid was waiting for the grenade to go off, Winters realized this, got back up, and then shot him as he was cowering. So that didn't happen, but the same element still applies. The idea of shooting an enemy combatant that isn't prepared for you, and then slaughtering hundreds more is still very well portrayed in that episode. Some of the friendships don't start off immediately like they do in the show as well. For instance, Nixon and Winters weren't best friends right off the bat. It was actually him and Welsh were best friends, but Winters and Nixon did become very good friends. Either way, what you should take away from this review is that Band of Brothers is by God the near damn best miniseries ever put on screen in a long, long time, if not one of the best of all time. So of course, I'm going to give Band of Brothers a 7 out of 7. If you've never seen this show, I would highly recommend it. You can find it almost anywhere. I think they sell the Blu-ray version for $20 
come every Black Friday. It honestly is one of the best representations of our veterans from that war that has ever been put on film. With very few of them left nowadays, it's more important than ever that we remember this. We remember what these guys went through and we remember what they went through, the horrors, the hell, the absolute torture that they went through so that we can live the lives that we have now. I respect these veterans with my utmost and sincerity as they did something that I know for a fact I could never do. These kids were 18, 19, 20, 21, and to think about what I was like back then and to be put into a situation like that, I wouldn't have been able to handle it. Not today which is why we're just a different breed of people than we were back then. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this review. I hope you enjoyed this new camera because this is going to be the new review camera. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, maybe subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching the video. It's been a while, but I'm happy to say the click is finally getting back together in an all new movie, thanks to a successful Kickstarter campaign. But we are still asking for your support. You know, Nitz, you can't get more money unless you offer questionable favors. Yeah, guy. Unless, of course, those favors involve the ladies, guy. By support, I mean getting the word out, guys. Oh, well, couldn't you find a better means than this guy? All he seems to talk about is supernatural. Or hold a coffee mug real awkward. Why didn't you ask a Kardashian or something? Yeah, guy. Get in with the ladies, guy. Hey, he's trying to help out. Like you've been trying with Kimmy Burton? I've seen Jabba the Hutt finish a marathon faster. Yeah, guy. You're a massive slug thing, guy. <sighs> To see any and all updates about the upcoming Undergrads movie, be sure to check out and like the Bring Back Undergrads Facebook page. And with any luck, we'll see you guys soon.